Hello everybody. Welcome back to another trades training video. I'm Joe Carswell and this lesson is all about wall sheathing. Let's get to it. Once we get all of our wall framing done, it's time to add wall sheathing. Wall sheathing is sheet materials uh, of different types that get added to the outside. This gives us a solid continuous surface on the outside. If you see on this image, it, this is an entire house that's been sheathed. It looks like one continuous surface, but it's actually made of several separate panels that are fastened or nailed to all of this framing. It might look random when you look at it, but there is very specific rules that we have to follow to get all of this sheathing up and have it do its job. There are three main jobs that we need for our sheathing to do, depending on where it is on the house. Number one would be sheathing adds strength to our wall panels. There are sections or zones of our houses where we need this bracing or strength added. It could be because of a wind, a high wind area that we live in. It could be because of seismic zones where that house is built. It could be because of the weight that has been carried from the upper stories down through that wall to the foundation. All of those things require more strength. We can get that by adding sheathing and adding fasteners in specific places. The other thing our sheathing can do for us is start to enclose this house. This framing can't stay open. It has to be closed. We need this house airtight and watertight. Our sheathing is the beginning step of that process. This material is not by any means uh, waterproof or airtight, but this layer, along with other layers that come later, build up to make that condition of an airtight, watertight space. Another thing our sheathing can do for us is give us a surface to nail other materials to. We're not done with our sheathing. We have to add other layers of materials here, whether it's a vapor barrier that gets stapled on, or it could be even siding that gets added, or maybe even a brick veneer. All of those require something to nail to. This, our studs are at regular intervals, but we might need some fastening room in between those studs. Our sheathing gives us that continuous option. So let's go back to this strength issue with our sheathing. If I have a wall here, a typical framed wall, by itself, it's not that strong in the side to side direction. If I add a force to either side, this panel can rack. That has a lot to do with the geometry of it. It doesn't have to do with the strength of the materials. It's more about how they're put together. So what our sheathing does, if we fasten it solidly to all of this framing, is it prevents that shifting or racking of this wall panel and it eliminates what we call shear. Shear is that side to side force that can destroy a wall. A couple of common materials we use for sheathing is OSB, which is the stranded sheet material, or it could be plywood, which is a veneered or layered wood material. Both of those use glues to hold these parts together and they're put together under a lot of pressure and they make a panel that's fairly uniform and straight and very square in their dimensions. Regardless if it's OSB or if it's plywood, we need this material to be rated for that job of sheathing. And you'll find this information on the grade stamp that's stamped on every panel. Here you see a grade stamp and it says very clearly that it is rated for that job of sheathing. Our OSB panels come in a typical size of four by eight. They also come in longer sizes. You'll see a four by nine feet and a four by 10 feet. These longer versions are typically run vertically and that's to help span on a, a building from the first floor up to the second floor to make for easier installation. Our building code tells us that we can use different thicknesses of OSB, anything from three eighths of an inch on up in thickness. It depends on the strength we need out of that particular wall. Um, the minimum is the 3 8 and like I said, it goes on up from there. Some of your typical widths or thicknesses will be half inch or something very similar. You see a lot of 7 16 used, which is very close on the low side of half inch. And there's another one, 15 30 seconds, which is barely under a half an inch. You'll see that used as well. OSB panels for wall sheathing have a cool feature built into them. They have lines that are pre-marked on the boards that will help us line up our nailer when we're nailing into our layout studs. 
These lines are marked 24 on center, as you see in the presentation, and these run vertically and horizontally. Also, there are marks for 16 on center. So depending on what your wall layout is, these can help you without having to measure to do all of your nailing patterns that you need to do. Looking at this wall back here, we can see those lines at work. So this is my factory edge. This is uh, uh, where we'd start measuring from. And if I pull a tape measure here, I have a 16 inch, uh, I have a line marked at 16 inches here. I also have another line at 32 inches and then I'll have one at 48, et cetera, on down the wall. So if this wall was a 16 inch on center wall, I could start nailing it using those lines as my guide marks. All of a sudden you start to see that your layout has to be very close to perfect for this to work. But if all that works, it makes very quick nailing of this. If this wall here was a 24 on center layout, then this line right here would be my two foot line and then my four foot is shared with my 16 on center. It would go on to six foot and then eight foot. Let's talk about the fasteners that we're gonna to use to put this stuff up. We're gonna have a couple of different options, one of which is a nail and one is a staple. Both of these are acceptable according to code, but the rules change with each one. So for our 7 16 15 30 seconds, or half inch sheathing, which is our most common, we're going to need an 8D nail. They are two and a half inches long. This would give us a two inch bite into our framing. You can either use a smooth shank, uh, 8D common nail, or you might use what's called a deformed shank. We talked about these uh, when we went through our fasteners. These would be, say, a ring shank nail, and you see that they have uh, ridges on them. That helps them hold into the framing a lot stronger. Our staples could be either a 15 or a 16 gauge, one inch staple, and these need to be an inch and three quarters long. Code not only dictates what specific fasteners we can use when we're doing wall sheathing, it also talks about the nailing patterns and distances between the fasteners that we have to use. So on our, our OSB, typical nailing patterns would be uh, edge nailing with those 8D nails would be six inches spacing between every nail all along the outside edges. Once we get to the interior of the panel, wherever we have a stud, whether it's running vertically here or horizontally, we need a nail every 12 inches into that stud. I would call that nailing in the field, but technically it's for any of these intermediate supports that land within the inside of this panel. Another spec when you're edge nailing with 8D nails is that any of those nails that land on this perimeter have to be 3 eighths of an inch from this outside edge. Hi, sorry for the interruption. I had a quick message for you. We offer a lot of other lessons at our learning portal, which is tradeskillsu.com. If you're a teacher and you've found us here, we have a ton of other resources to help you with your students teach them construction in a digital environment. You can find those at teachconstruction.org. Once again, thanks for watching. Let's get back to the video. If we're fastening with staples, things change a little bit. I mentioned we can use a 15 gauge staple or a 16 gauge staple. Our 15 gauge staples are thicker than our 16 gauge, but our spacing gets smaller than our 8D nails. With our 15 gauge staples, our spacing around the perimeter have to be four inches, and in the field, any studs we hit, we have to be eight inches on center or spaced apart. If we go with our 16 gauge uh, staples, we have to even get smaller. Now we're three inches apart on the perimeter, and we're six inches in the field. Sheathing can be oriented on a building either vertically or horizontally. You'll see a vertical orientation a lot of times, and there's a, a, some benefits to this. One would be that the panel travels from, uh, for, if this is an eight foot panel and this is an eight foot wall, the panel travels from the bottom plate up to the top plate. So the, if you look at all my edges and we talk about our edge nailing and we need say six inches for our nails, we have edges to nail all the way around. On the sides, I have my end stud and then I have my common stud over here. And then on the bottom, I have a bottom plate. And on the top, I have a top plate. All of this gives me solid framing to nail all these panel edges to. Then I would nail my center studs, whatever ones fell inside of here. 
But the benefit here is that I don't have any edges that I can't nail. So vertical helps us with that edge support situation. If you turn this panel horizontally here, you see that I have an entire edge of this panel that is unsupported by any framing. If you have a, a building and you have a wall that needs to be uh, nailed with edge support all the way around, this can become a problem or a situation you have to solve. In some cases, you might have to add blocking in between these bays to provide the edge support to make this orientation work. You'll see both uh, configurations used with building. I see them all the time. Neither one is uh, better or worse. You just have to consider the amount of effort or extra work it takes to add blocking in some situations. No matter which way you do, whether it's vertical or horizontal, with the wall sheathing, there is one thing that you have to remember to do. It might be one of the most important things about sheathing, and it's often either misunderstood or ignored. Every manufacturer spells out a gap in between the panels. You can see this gap here in between my two sheets of OSB wall sheathing. This is an eighth inch gap, and your manufacturer spells out this gap for expansion of materials. If you understand anything about building materials, it is that they move. So the framing is always moving based on moisture in the air and whatever weather it could be. As it dries, it shrinks. As it uh, gets wet, it grows. Same with your OSB. So all of your materials are moving around a lot. We have to engineer spaces in between them because when they grow, if they don't have that room, they're going to sort of interfere with each other, you'll see buckling that will happen. It happens on roofs a lot. It also happens on wall sheathing. If you don't put this gap in, you could even void the warranty on certain materials or building systems on your house. I often see this completely ignored or not done properly or not done continuously around the whole building. It's very easy to do. All you do is drive an uh, 8D nail, which is about an eighth of an inch thick, into the framing and then you drop the panel on it, it creates that space in between, you nail the board up and you've got your gap. Not only would it be your horizontal gaps on your boards, but also your vertical gaps in between panels should carry that same space. There's another specification that we need our wall sheathing to be, and that, is, uh, that has to do with its exposure rating. Our exposure rating has to do with uh, the glues that it's made of and how uh, waterproof are these glues. Exposure one, which you see on this panel, means that those are completely waterproof glues. That does not make OSB waterproof. What it does is it makes the glues waterproof so it will hold together for temporary weather exposure. When we're building a building, it doesn't go up in one day. There is a delay between when you start sheathing to when you're finished, and any weather that comes along, this sheathing has to hold up during that time until it gets dried in, sealed up with other materials like house wraps, siding, all of that will clad the house and then make it waterproof. In the, in the meantime, the sheathing has to hold up long enough to get through the installation. So here's an interesting system that is basically OSB sheathing. It's called Zip System. This has the same specs as our typical OSB panels, but it adds something extra, some more engineering. It's adding a layer or a coating on the outside. You see here in green, that's typically for walls. You might see a brown sheathing for the roof decks. That would be a 5H roof deck. But that coating becomes a vapor barrier for that product. And a vapor barrier gets added after the wall sheathing to uh, control moisture flow through the building. So this is saving us a step with this zip system to put this up, we skip having to add other materials on, and then we tape the seams with that special black tape, and we end up with a house that is, or a building, which is now sealed up, ready for an exterior cladding like siding. And I'm bringing up this zip system in this sheathing lesson because this is sort of an emerging product. It's gained a lot of popularity. I see it used a lot here in Colorado. As I drive to work every day, I can show you three or four sites where it's going up. It's very easy to identify. It's a cool system that's integrating two steps into one. That saves us time. So this is an introduction into wall sheathing. 
just let me tell you that there is so many rules related to which part of the building, how much strength you need, uh, what is your on-center layouts, all of that changes things. You really, to fully understand this, would have to get into the code book and each situation is gonna be different. But a lot of these general rules will be similar, but just maybe little tweaks to them, whether it's your nail spacing gets closer or further apart, your fasteners change, that kind of thing. So keep in mind that this is the beginnings of a long process that we call wall sheeting. I hope that makes sense. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next lesson.